Hello, we are going to do the sequence number one. Tasha will demonstrate, I will guide you through. So we will start in Shavasana. Thank you, Tasha, for demonstrating for us. Um, we start in Shavasana, so we take some time in Shavasana to relax, lay down on your back. This is a death body pose. So in this position, you will try to align the head, the spine, the whole body in a straight line, the arms beside the body, palms facing upwards, the legs apart, hip width apart, or a little bit more, the tip of the toes slightly out, so your hips are relaxed, the palms are facing upwards, the fingers are relaxed, so they will slightly roll in. Eyes gently closed, whole face relaxed, face muscles relaxed. Give yourself some time in the posture. Relax the whole body. Relax the legs and the feet. Relax the arms, the hands. The whole back. The neck. The head. Forehead relaxed. Eyebrows. Eyebrow center. The eyes, the nose, relax the lips, whole face. Also relax the throat, the chest, and the abdomen. Feel the abdomen. Raising a little bit when you breathe in. And relaxing when you breathe out. Without controlling this movement, just observe how the air comes in and out of the body, how the abdomen Expands a bit when breathing in and relaxes when breathing out. Also feel the chest expanding a bit when breathing in and relaxing when breathing out. Don't control the breath, just observe the natural breath process. And feel the air coming in and out of the body. Then slowly, Deepen a little bit the breath. Maybe you do it a bit louder and deeper. This will immediately activate circulation, activate prana. So you will feel a little bit more of energy. You take a couple of deep breaths in and out. Feel the body again and start moving slowly fingers, toes. Maybe you want to roll a bit the hands or the feet or do any other movement you want to do in this moment. Bringing the knees to the chest so the lower back makes contact with the floor, holding your knees and maybe with slight movements you start massaging a little bit the lower back. 
or maybe you want to do any other spontaneous movement. It is important in this phase, we call it warm up, to do nourishing movements which give the body and the mind a nice, pleasant sensation so we can later on do more challenging asanas. You can also rotate the knees by holding the knees, separating them a little bit, pushing them down, bringing them back together, back to the chest, and do nice rotations of the hips using the strength of your arms and hands to move the legs. If you want to do any other variation, like for example the happy baby, like holding the inner part of your feet and pushing the knees towards the floor, stretching the back of the thighs, the buttocks and the lower back, also the whole pelvic floor. There are many variations and options you can do in this position. Feel free to experiment yourself if you're practicing at home with other positions. Otherwise, we can go to the next one, Supta Muktasana. We bring the legs back on the floor. And then we stretch the left leg on the floor and bring the right knee to the chest. Hug your leg and push the thigh towards the abdomen, bringing the nose tip to the knee, breathing out, and breathing in, relaxing. Stretch the leg again, then bring the left knee to the chest, push it towards the abdomen, breathe out, bringing the knee, the knee to the tip of the nose, and then breathe in, get back to the floor. You can do with both legs now, breathing out, bringing both knees to the chest, no step to the knees, breathe out, and breathe in, relax. You can do dynamically this position, for example, by bringing both knees to the chest, breathing out, bringing the knees to the face, and then breathing in, relaxing again. We can do a few more rounds, breathing out, bringing the knees to the chest, the tip of the nose to the knees and then breathing in, relaxing. A few more rounds, breathing out. And by breathing in, if you want to do another variation, a back bending, we bring the heels to the floor, raising the buttocks, activating a little bit the lower back and the buttocks. If you want also, you can bring the arms over the head, breathing in, and by breathing out, getting back in Supta Pava Muktasana, bringing the knees to the chest, the tip of the nose to the knees. This is a forward bending, we're stretching the back muscles, and then we do a backward bending by activating the back muscles. We can do a few more rounds, this is an excellent warm up, because we are activating and stretching the back muscles, also the whole spine, so this is sending activation through the nerves, passing through the spine to the whole body. So the whole body is becoming warmer, but in a nourishing way, without challenging the body and the mind too much. Very nice. After the last round, we can bring the knees to the chest, hold there for a moment, bringing the back, the head back to the floor, and we can do a few slight movements, right, left, or small circles to massage the lower back again. And then we will do some twisting by bringing the heels on the floor, 
We can interlock the fingers behind the head or just bring the arms over the head. Breathing in, by breathing out, we bring the knees to the left, stretching the right side. And then back to the middle, breathing in, breathing out, bringing the knees to the right and the head to the left. We can continue in our own rhythm. As you see here, Tasha is coordinating the movement with the breath. So she breathes in till the end of the movement and then breathes out till the end of the movement. Here she's keeping the heels on the floor. You can also do a variation with the knees elevated exactly. So you can try at home which one suits better your needs. In this variation she's doing, she's challenging a little bit more the abdominal muscles. If she brings the heels to the buttocks, this is less challenging for the abdominal muscles. You can try at home and see which one is more suitable to you. I personally prefer to keep my heels on the floor. I don't know you, Tasha. But anyway, this is a personal thing. When we are twisting, twisting is a very good thing after some back and forward bending. This is decompressing the lower spine. It's releasing tension from this region of the body. It is very good also to improve digestion, to release also air from the intestines and pressure from the lower back and lower abdomen. So after these asanas, we're gonna start to warm up a little bit in a more intense way. We're going to work a little bit in the abdominal region. We bring the palms on the floor. Maybe sometimes we can also bring the thumbs a little bit under the buttocks. This will also support not too much, but just to maybe let's say half of the hand under the buttocks to support a bit the lower back if it's needed. If not, it's not a problem. But sometimes uh, working on the abdominal region can challenge a little bit the lower back. So we try to support the lower back to keep everything safe. We're gonna do Padasan Chalanasana, the cycling. So we bring the knees to the chest and then we do big circles as we, if we are riding a bicycle one leg after the other. Here you don't need to coordinate the breath. This will, will warm up the body very fast because we are working in Manipura chakra, the navel chakra, who is responsible for distributing prana in the body. From here, the warmth uh, is distributed through the body. It's the sitting chakra for fire element. So when we work in this region of the body, we will immediately see the effects warming up the body. Also, it's responsible for the eyes, the sight uh, senses. So um, you will also notice in your eyes that they are being activated. It is also extroverting and increasing willpower. You could do the same circles backwards, for example, like on the other direction. If it's not an issue to coordinate it, it shouldn't. So you can practice otherwise. And we're going to continue to work in the abdominal region now. Maybe we can do a short break by holding the knees. It can help to decompress any uh, tension on the abdomen, breathing in deeply and pushing the abdomen out by breathing in and relaxing. You can do slight movements again here and get ready for the next one, which is gonna be a little bit more challenging. We can stretch the legs towards the ceiling, trying if possible to point the heels towards the ceiling and the tip of the toes towards you, if this is okay. If you cannot stretch completely the legs, you can bend slightly the knees. Now we're gonna work here further in the abdominal region by breathing out, uh, lowering the right leg towards the floor. And before we touch the floor, we hold there five centimeters away from the floor and then breathe in, raising 
up the leg again. Then we do the left leg, breathing out, lowering. Before we touch the floor, we hold there, breathing in, coming back up. Then we continue one leg after the other, breathing out, lowering, breathing in, raising. In your own pace, in your own rhythm. Breathe out, lower the leg, breathe in, raise the leg. After completing a few rounds, you could do both legs together if this is suitable for you. So with both legs it's a bit more challenging. So you breathe out when you lower the legs, you breathe in when you raise the legs. Try to integrate in your asanas always some abdominal work. It is very good from the fitness perspective also for the body to support the lower back, to support the posture, to improve the digestion. It will uh, definitely improve your life's quality in terms of movement and anatomy. And also supporting the digestive system, which is very important. There are many variations of this posture. For example, you could do circles in clockwise direction, breathing in, raising up, breathing out, lowering. If this is too much, you don't need. Try to bring the heels as close as possible to the floor when you're lowering. And you could do eventually in the other direction. There are other options, like for example, separating the legs by raising them up and lowering, bringing them together. Of course, in both directions. And you can try, experiment with other variations. We can discuss them anytime at class. Of course, anytime you can do a break by, for example, bringing the knees to the chest again, holding the knees, breathing deeply in the abdomen, relaxing, massaging the lower back, or just laying down in Shavasana for a moment and relax. After a few moments of break, we can continue to work in the abdomen with the next one, Naukasana, the boat, bringing the feet together, the palms on the thighs or next to the thighs, raising the head, looking at your feet at the tip of the toes and raising also the feet a little bit. We keep it lower, so we are working more intensively in the lower abdomen, breathe out, relax. We can do this dynamically by raising up, breathing in, and breathing out, relaxing. Breathing in, raising up, and breathing out, relaxing. You could do also static by raising up and holding there, continue to breathe normally, and holding in the position for some time, and then next time by breathing in, you relax on your back in Shavasana. Very good. After a few more rounds, you can relax by coming back to Shavasana. If you want, you can stretch the arms over the head and take a deep breath in, so you can distribute this whole activation of prana in Manipura and the whole body, and then come shortly back in Shavasana to observe the effects. You might notice that the body is warmer, you feel more active, more extroverted, more energized, and we can continue with a more active phase of the asanas by coming into a sitting position. We can bend the knees and bring the heels on the floor. Um, <clears throat> sitting with your buttocks on the floor maybe, holding the back <clears throat> with your hands and raising the buttocks towards the ceiling like you're 
navel towards the ceiling, activating a little bit the lower back, the, the back of the thighs and the buttocks, and breathing out, coming back to the floor. We can do this dynamically. Fingertips could be towards you or in the other direction. Tasha is pointing them towards herself, but she could point them in the other direction. So you breathe in, you raise up, you breathe out, you lower. Very nice. And after your last round, you can also maybe try to do some twistings if you want. Otherwise, just bringing the knees on one side, twisting the head in the other direction. So you feel the stretch in the sides. Very nice. If you want to imp improvise any other movement that feels good in this moment, try to go with your body feeling and feel free to do it. We're going to move into the next position, which is Vashrasana sitting on the heels. We can face this direction maybe so people can see you while rotating the head. We're going to do neck rotation or head rotation in clockwise direction. So we rotate the head, breathing in, leaning the head backwards and breathing out forward. You can gently close the eyes. The circus doesn't need to be that big. You can do maybe small circles. Important is that shoulders are down. And try to coordinate the movement with the breath. Breathing in backwards, breathing out forward. And any time you can do the other direction. After a few rounds, you can bring the back, the head, sorry, back to the neutral position, observing the effect, which are very noticeable. You can feel maybe the changes on the breath and in your general state. Then we do some shoulder rotation by bringing the tip of the fingers on the shoulders and raising the elbows towards the ceiling, breathing in and breathing out, down. Try to coordinate movement and breath. Breathing in, raising, breathing out, lowering. And anytime you can do in the other direction. So relax after the last round. In case you want to shake a little bit your shoulders to get rid of any tension. Then we go into the next position by bringing the hands on the, on the floor, the cat pose. First in this position is a very good opportunity. We have to do some spontaneous movements. As you can see, Tasha is doing maybe some, just some rotation of the hips or the shoulders or any other movement that in this moment feels good. You can take some time 
to um, improvise, go through the body feeling what feels good. Just feel free to do it. Maybe you can have the feeling you're massaging your body with the movement. Whenever you're stretching a little bit the body, you will feel the energy is flowing nicely. You feel that you're relaxing these body parts with your own movement. After a few moments improvising, we can go into the cat posture by activating the back muscles, raising the head and the buttocks. You feel how the back muscles are being activated here. Breathing in and then breathing out, you will bring the chin to the chest, the abdomen pulled in, stretching the back muscles. So you will do a backward bending by breathing in, and a forward bending by breathing out. If you pull the abdomen in, in this position, by breathing out, you will feel a more intense stretching of the back. And at the end of this movement, when you push the abdomen out by breathing in, you will feel a more intense backward bending. This posture gives lots of space for variations, improvisations. So feel free, in case you're practicing at home, to explore and experiment. After a few rounds, we can stay in a neutral position where the spine is neutral, it is straight. And we will do some more intense back bendings by raising the left leg with the heel towards the ceiling. So you're activating the back of the thighs and the buttocks. And then if you want to activate more intensively in the upper back, you can stretch the right arm. If you're looking forward, it will be more intense in the upper back. Otherwise, if it's too much, you can bring the head in a neutral position. Breathe out, relax. Observe the effect. And you can do the other leg. Right leg, raising up, breathing in. If it's too much, you can stay here. Otherwise, you can also raise the left arm. And of course, look forward in case you want to intensify the effect of the backward bending. Breathe out, relax. We can do this dynamically if we want by raising up, breathing in. And also including a forward bending in case you want it by bringing the knee to the face, for example. Otherwise, you can do the static variation. So after a few rounds, we can do a short break in Shashankasana, in the cold child pose or full moon pose, where we will give the back a few moments to relax. So in this position, you will have some stretching on the back after these back bendings. It's always good to have some counter pose. That's what we're getting in to Shashankasana for just a moment to give the back the chance to relax. From here, we will slip forward and come into the abdomen. We're gonna bring the legs a little bit apart, like your mat width apart and the tip of the toes tucked in to the mat. We're gonna do the twisting cobra, which is a very good position to, to uh, release any tensions on the lower back. It strengthens the, strengthens the lower back muscles at the same time, relax them. It is very good and beneficial also for the digestion. And it also uh, is good for arms, shoulders, it's a very complete posture, sometimes a bit uh, 
exigent, so we try to do this posture this way. So we breathe in, pushing with the hands forward, raising up, twisting to the left, the head, try to push a little bit more with the arms. You're gonna rotate also the, the pelvis. You're, look, you're looking at your right heel in this case, so you feel the stretching on the right side. Then we can twist on the other direction, looking at the left heel, exactly, and then breathing out, relaxing. We can do this dynamically by breathing in, holding the breath, twisting to the left, then to the right, and then breathe out, relax. It can go faster if you want, breathing in, pushing, twisting left, right, you hold the breath there and breathe out, get back to the floor. This is called Tiriaka Bhushangasana or Twisting Cobra. Very good. Make sure always that your leg stayed apart. And after a few rounds, we can do a short break by coming back to the floor. And then maybe we want to do the, the plain cobra, the normal Bhushangasana, by bringing again the hands back under the shoulders, feet together. You could have the back of the feet on the floor or the tip of the toes tucked in. You can try both. This variation is a little bit more uh, demanding for the lower back. I prefer it personally, but you can try both. It's important when we do the cobra that we activate the knees so we stretch the legs and we activate the thighs. You push forward with the hands, breathe in, push the abdomen out. So you're engaging also the core muscles and you activate the lower back. The hands are pushing forward. The weight is distributed. You're, this is maybe too much for most of the people. So we're gonna keep the abdomen on the floor, the elbows next to the rib cage, and you're facing whether forward or upwards but you're using mostly the abdominal muscles, the back muscles, the, the buttocks and the thighs more than the hands. Then breathe out, come back to the floor. <clears throat> if we do this dynamically, we can breathe in, raising up, breathe out, relax. Breathe in, raising up, and breathe out, get back to the floor. And again, of course, you can stay in the posture for longer periods of time if you want it. Otherwise, a few rounds will be enough. So next time when we are raising up by breathing in, we push with the hands further and we go back to Shashankasana. So after these back bendings, we give again the back the chance to relax in the counter pose. And the next time we will slip forward again, but this time we will go in an upward facing dog. So we're going to stretch the arms, look up, stretching the front part of the body. And then we will slowly build up the downward facing dog by bringing the tip of the toes on the floor, hip width apart. And we're gonna build up slowly the posture. First, we were gonna bend the knees and raise the knees from the floor, making the spine long exactly this way. So some people call this posture the mountain pose and it makes sense because the tailbone will be the highest, the peak, the peak of the mountain. So the spine is long, you can uh, look at your feet or the knees, so there is a slight forward bend in here and then we can stretch one leg maybe after the other. This is a very, also very good warm up, mostly if you're twisting a little bit the the pelvis when doing these steps on the air. Be careful not to harm the tendons here and the heels, so keep the movement uh, before the maximal range of movement. So you don't stretch at 100%, always give some room and keep the movement in a um, comfortable, range of movement. So after some time, if you're feeling too, try to bring both heels to the floor. 
Here we can do a few variations, like for example, raising the right leg towards the ceiling, breathing in and breathing out. You can bring the foot, uh, fr sorry, the foot between both hands. Or this position, and also this is also very good for the abdominal muscles. Another option you can have here is like bending the knee and opening the, the lower body a little bit. So this is a good stretching for the front part of the leg and also the groin and the abdomen. We're going to bring the foot forward between both hands. The left knee on the floor. And here you can also improvise a little bit of movement, for example, by stretching the left arm towards the ceiling, maybe opening a little bit the left side, or doing other postures. We try to bring some stretching on the iliopsoas muscle and the abdominal muscles here, opening this part of the body, which is very important. Tasha is doing some spontaneous movement and improvising. There are many options you can do here. Always try to keep in a certain uh, comfortable level. Don't go beyond your maximal range of movement. Try to keep the movement in a safe way. From here, we're going to do the warrior two, so maybe it's better if we do it in the other direction. So we keep the right foot forward, the left knee on the floor. For the warrior two, we're gonna place the left heel on the floor, making sure that this heel doesn't go too much back. So if, in case you want to correct, uh, to um, adjust it and bring it more to, uh, towards the left side, it's not a problem, so you don't have any problem when having the base of this posture. Just raising up into the warrior two, bending the right knee, the weight of the body distributed well with, between both legs, chest open, shoulders down, you're facing to the right. Then we're gonna go down with the elbow to the side trying to create a straight line between the leg and the upper body, and then the left arm making a continuation, a prolongation of this line. Tasha is using her right elbow to push and open the chest a little bit more, and she's facing the left hand, so the spine is rotated and there is a better opening of the chest in this position. The option to go farther down is there, if you want it, but try not to miss the line between the leg and the upper body. So for that, you will need to bend a little bit more the right knee and lower the pelvis a little bit more. Very good. From here, we can move back into the downward facing dog. So bring the hands back on the floor and make a big step with the right foot to get back into the downward facing dog. So we can also, in this case, Raise the left leg towards the ceiling as we have done before. Today you brought the knee to the chest, so we can do this option. Of course, you can do many rounds of this if you want. We're just doing only one. And then we have this open, exactly. In this case, you want to keep the head in a neutral position, even if you're opening. So now we're gonna bring the left foot forward. So maybe now we need to rotate again. <laughs> so the left foot forward and do some improvisations to stretch the right side like we have done before. What you want to do here is to have the feeling of the stretching on the front. In the iliopsoas, the muscles connect, connecting the spine and the pelvis, in the thigh, in the groin. Go with the body feeling, whatever feels good, do it. Feel free to experiment, to find your own 
posture. Always keep it comfortable, keep it safe. It has to give you a good feeling. Don't go beyond that feeling. So from here, we're gonna move again to the warrior two by bringing the heel on the floor, raising the upper body, arms parallel to the floor, your chin over the left shoulder, chest open, the weight of the body well distributed between both legs. There are many options and variations in this posture, so feel free to do any other variations you want to do. We're gonna do the side bending again by bringing the left elbow to the thigh and stretching the right arm. So we create a long line between leg, upper body and arm. If you wanna do twistings or other side bendings or any other variations or experimentations in this position, feel free to do it. So we're gonna bring both hands to the floor now. We're not going to go into the downward facing dog. This time we're gonna do a big step with the right foot forward. So we bring both legs hip width apart we're gonna bend the knees and allow the upper body to fall comfortably. You can maybe do some pendulum to the right and left if you want to stretch a little bit the body. When the knees are bent, you're giving priority to the stretching of the back. So this is very comfortable. And we're gonna go up by rolling very slowly the spine, bending the knees, bringing the pelvis forward, the head, Falls, the shoulders are heavy, shoulders away from the ears, and we're coming slowly back into a standing position. Once you're in a neutral position, observe for a moment the effect of the practice in your breath, in your general state, in your feeling. Then we move into the next position. We are going to do a balancing posture, a kapadasana. We're gonna um, bring the weight of the body to the right foot. It is always recommendable to fix your gaze in a point um, for balancing. We stretch the arms over the head, taking a deep breath in, and then we bend forward by breathing out, raising the left leg towards the ceiling, the heel towards the ceiling, the tip of the toes towards the floor. Very good. You go as much as is comfortable for you. In case you need to bend your right knee a little bit, it's okay. So you don't need to go as deep as Tasha is going. If you can go a little bit before that, it's also okay. So from here, we're gonna get back to the floor, breathing in, breathing out, stretch the arms. You can look up if you want and breathe out, relax. After a few breaths, we can do the other side. Breathing in, raising up. The weight on the left foot, fix your, fix your gaze for balancing and breathing out, bending forward. If the head is looking if you're looking down, you're not engaging that much the, the upper back muscles. If you're looking forward, it is more demanding for the upper back. By breathing in, you go back, raise the arms over the head, and breathe out, relax. Get ready for the sun salutation, Surya Namaskara. Feet together or hip width apart in a neutral position. Chin parallel to the floor, crown of the head towards the ceiling, shoulders down. You can do a slight um, activation of the abdomen so the spine is not um, overactive. So you're relaxing, you're making the lower spine long somehow. 
you can tilt slightly your pelvis forward. Palms in front of the chest in Namaskar Mudra or Pranam Mudra, palms together. You can visualize maybe the sun rise in a certain moment on the nature. Try to connect with the sun energy and the feeling you have when the sun is in front of you or you're getting the sun energy. Take a deep breath in and out. And then we raise the arms over the head, doing a slack backward bending, looking up, breathe in, breathe out, bend forward. In case you, bend, you need to bend the knees, feel free to do it. Try to bring the forehead to the knees. So if for that you need to bend the knees, that's totally okay, mostly in the first rounds. So you will find it easier and more comfortable. Of course, if you can do it with legs stretched out, feel free to do it. Then we do a big step with the right foot backwards, bringing the knee on the floor, the groin and the pelvis as close as possible to the floor, and then you walk back with the fingertips. You remain with the fingertips on the floor, and you look up. This is Ashwasan Chalanasana. It's a very intense back, backward bending, but mostly a stretching for, for the front part of the body. From here, we will go into the downward facing dog, Parvatasana, breathing out. Then we bring knees, chest, and chin into the floor in Ashtanga Namaskara. Breathe in out, or you continue to breathe out here, and then you breathe in into the Cobra or Bhushangasana. Here you can bring whether the tip of the toes this way or tucked in as you prefer. Later on will be much easier to get into the downward facing dog. From here we push farther forward and we breathe out into the downward facing dog. Then the left foot forward again, breathing in. Ashwasan Chalanasana, breathing out. You bend. You come with the right foot forward forehead to the knees. In case you need to bend the knees, feel free to do it. Then you look forward, engage the back part of the thighs, the core muscles, the pelvic floor, breathing in, raising up, slight backward bending, breathe out the palms in front of the chest, hold there. And then again, breathe in, raise up, breathe out, bend forward. Left foot, breathe in. Breathe out. Downward facing dog. Continue to breathe out in Ashtanga Namaskara, knees, chest and chin on the floor. Breathe in, Bhushangasana. Breathe out. Parvatasana. Breathe in, right foot forward. Breathe out. Breathe in, raise up. Breathe out, relax. This is only one round. We're going to lay down in Shavasana, but if you want to continue and do a few more rounds, feel free to do it. After the sun salutation, when you're laying down in Shavasana, try to observe the effects of the sun salutation, Surya Namaskara, the most intense in the physical body, the heart beating faster, the body is warm, the breath is agitated. All this is part of the effects of the sun salutation in the physical body. After that, you can tune the awareness with more subtle effects. For example, the mental or the pranic the energetic effects of Surya Namaskara. You may feel the mind is agitated, active, extroverted, energized. 
and you will also feel certain sensations in a more subtle way, for example, tingling sensations or warmth in the body, flowing. You can also visualize these feelings like little pearls, white pearls or golden pearls, maybe in the chest, in the throat, the face, the arms and hands, or in the legs or anywhere. After a few moments, you will also notice that the effect of the sun salutation is neutralizing. Shavasana is a very powerful posture as well. It's inducing calmness, moon energy, the opposite of the sun salutation. So you might notice as well that after a few moments in Shavasana, the mind is introverted, the breath is more quiet, heart beating as well. So we are neutralizing the effect of Surya Namaskara with Shavasana. After this, we can improvise again some massaging on the lower back by bringing the knees on the chest and doing slight movements again, as we did at the beginning of the class. Feel free to improvise anything here to experiment, to find what is more comfortable for you. After a few moments, whenever you feel ready, you can go into Sharvangasana, the shoulder sun or candle pose. Of course, carefully here with your lower back and your neck. So in case you need to do a slight variation where you go into a kind of half uh, shoulder stand, feel free to do it. The feet are relaxed. We try to bring the chest as close as possible to the chin in this case, so we're as much vertical as possible, but keeping in a safe uh, position. I mean, if you cannot come so far, mostly in the mornings, feel free to go into a, a lighter variation, let's say by bringing the upper body, like Tasha is doing now here, like 45 degrees on the floor. This is much lighter. Um, if you want to come into Halasana, the next position, first bring the knees to the forehead, so this is more comfortable. And of course, in case you can bring the tip of the toes to the floor, feel free to do it. Once you have this position, you can interlock the fingers and stretch the arms. But again, here try to stay in a comfortable level. Do not push beyond your limits. You can remain in this position as much as you want. Otherwise, anytime you can release the fingers, bring the fingertips on the floor, the knees again on the face, and roll the spine slowly by bringing the knees to the throat, to the chest, the heels to the buttocks, and you're bringing the spine back to the floor, bringing the heels on the floor. Maybe you want to stay there for a moment until your spine stabilizes a little bit. And any time, whenever you feel ready, you can get back in Shavasana. The effect of the shoulder stand, Sharvangasana, is very intense as well. So, maybe you want to direct the awareness towards the effect of the shoulder stand, which is very introverting, calming for body for mind, for the breath. After observing the effect, we can go into a counter pose, the fish posture, matsyasana, by bringing the hands under the buttocks, 
You can bring the palms of the hands downwards or upwards as you prefer. I personally prefer palms towards the floor. And then the crown of the head needs to touch the floor. Once you get into this final position, the whole body remains relaxed. Also, you don't need to activate the feet. Feet are relaxed. And once you're there, you can stretch one arm after the other by raising one buttock, for example, the right buttock, stretching a little bit more the right arm and then the left side. So by stretching the arms a little bit more, you will make sure that the... Can you bring under the buttocks? Yes. You make sure that the shoulders are not close to the ears. You want to keep the shoulders away from the ears. This is a very good posture to activate Vishuddhi Chakra by stretching the throat, activating the neck, and releasing energy and tensions from this region of the body. You can come out any time of the posture by raising the head. You can bring slightly the chin to the chest as a counter pose, and then get back in Shavasana. <clears throat> Observe the effects on the throat. Maybe on the ears as well. You can also visualize the effects you're feeling, like prana, like little pearls, white pearls, golden pearls. This helps to tune the mind in a more subtle way, so you become more and more aware of energy. In case you need to do some back massage by bringing the knees to the chest, again, some people like to do after these postures, again, some more uh, massage for the back, you can do it. Otherwise, we're gonna go into the next position, which is uh, Shava Udara Karshanasana. We will bring the legs on the floor again, stretched out, the right foot, on top of uh, the left knee, the left hand on the right knee, and the right arm on the side. Breathing out, you will twist in this position by bringing the knee to the side, and you can twist the head in the other direction. Try to stay in a comfortable level. Don't push too much, you want more than stretch, you want to open the body here. Feel the, the, have the feeling of the opening of the rib cage, the chest. So you are creating lots of space for your lungs here to breathe. This will automatically induce a very deep breath and through this, a very calming effect for the mind. You can stay as long as you want in this position one minute, two minutes, as you wish, and as much time as you have, of course. The longer you stay, the deeper the effect. We're gonna go back for now, breathing in back to the middle, and breathing out, relaxing in Shavasana. Maybe we stay a few moments to observe the effect of the practice, which is very intense in body and in mind. And then, anytime, we can do the other side, the other direction, by bringing the left foot on top of the right knee. With your right hand, you will push the leg towards the right, breathing out, and the head towards the left. Breathe in, get back to the middle, and breathe out, relax in Shavasana. This is the cool down phase, and here you can do as much as you want, as long as you want. You can do other positions, experiment. We're gonna do just a few more, like the half pigeon pose, by bending both knees, 
bringing the heels on the floor, right foot on top of the left thigh or knee, and with your hands you will pull the legs towards you. You have different options, Tasha is going with the hand through her legs, you can go over the leg, you can grasp as she's doing the knee, or you can grasp if it's too much the thigh, as you prefer. You just want to create the feeling of the stretching on the right side, on the hip, the hip opening feeling. Anytime you can release by breathing in, bring the heels again on the floor, and then changing sides. Left foot on top of the right side, and breathe out, pulling the legs towards the abdomen. And relax again, breathing in. You can bring the feet together, then the knees apart. If you want also the arms over the head, this is more intense opening in this case, just relaxing in this position, feeling the openness, trusting also in this openness because opening this way with eyes gently closed, you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. Just let go and trust in this position. You're also training the mind to trust, to let go with the posture. Anytime you can bring the knees together and then stretch in Shavasana. Of course, if you need or you want to do any other positions in this moment of the class, feel free to do it. Feel free to experiment with your own body, with your own experience and feeling. For, for now, we're going to finish the class here again in Shavasana. Observing the effect of the practices. Try to remain with the body in a still position. Do not move for a moment. Only mentally relax the body. Relax the legs and the feet. Relax the arms and the hands. Relax the lower back, the upper back, shoulder blades, shoulders, the neck, the head, the forehead, the eyebrows, the eyebrow center, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, chin, throat, relax the chest, Relax the abdomen. Relax the whole body. And for just a moment, move the awareness to the breath, to the natural breath, the spontaneous breath. Feel how the air comes in 
and out of the body. Feel the lungs expanding when you breathe in and relaxing when you breathe out. Feel the abdomen raising and falling spontaneously. Just observe the body breathing. Observe the state of your mind. If the mind is, if the mind is calm after the practice, the quality of your thoughts, and to extrovert again, to activate again, deepen the breath, maybe do it a bit louder, breathing in and out a few times. Moving slowly again, finger, toes, feet, hands. Come back into movement. Feel free to do any movements you want to do or remain for a moment in Shavasana. Coming back to normal rhythm and trying to integrate the, the effects of the class, of the practice into your daily life. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much, Tasha, for demonstrating. I hope you enjoy the class. See you next time.